chances are you're probably not going to need the type of motorcycle helmet that a professional racer does. And you're also probably not going to find a custom, perfect fit unless you are a racer as well. But it is just as important to get the right size and a good fitting helmet, plus one that has good safety ratings. In this Learning the Basics series video, I want to cover helmet sizing and safety with you. I'm going to cover the different safety ratings and talk just a little bit about them. And towards the end of the video, I'm going to cover some questions I've been asked in the past like what size helmet do I need, how does it fit, and what kind should I get. When it comes to safety of a helmet, size does matter. Before going any further in this video, I wanted to cover safety first. There may be more ratings that I talk about here, but I am only covering what I know about. If there are others that I don't cover, please feel free to leave a comment and share what the rating is so that others may have questions on them uh, and they can be answered. I am also only covering just a basic overview. There are a lot of videos and information out there that cover them in more detail, and I will leave links in the information in the description below in case you want to learn more. First up is the FIM rating, which stands for the following and the ECE, which is a certification that is mandatory for street motorcycle helmets in the European market. These requirements demand softer helmets and less impact uh, energy management than DOT or Snell. DOT is required on street legal motorcycle helmets in the US, and this rating started being required in 1974, and is also considered the FMV SS218, uh, and the draft was also taken directly from the 1971 ANSI, uh, standard Z90.1. Sadly, they do very little testing and haven't really changed the testing much over the years. And DOT also somewhat relies on an honor system from the manufacturers, meaning they rely on the manufacturer's word that the helmets were tested and passed. And yes, that's true. Doesn't really sound that good, does it, that they're just relying on the honor system. Snell incorporates all the testing requirements of the previously mentioned ratings, but goes a step above them all with better levels of impact management. They incorporate tests for what they consider are the four most critical elements affecting a helmet's protection and more. And some of those four steps are impact management, helmet position stability, retention system strength, and extent of protection. For street motorcycle helmets, there are basically three main helmet types, and I'll cover them but not every type of helmet for the sake of keeping this video short. There is an open face helmet, a modular helmet, and then a full face helmet. There are good and bad points to each of these helmets. For the open face, it is good for ventilation and vision, but bad for the protection of your face and sometimes not as well padded as a full face or modular helmet is. For the modular helmet, it is great for ease of talking, snacking, or being able to have a breather during pit stops. All you do is simply lift the front part up like a visor. The only bad part is that the chin and face part of the modular helmet is known as a weak point and during a crash can fail and even become a projectile into your face the full face helmet is the best overall protection for head and face and are usually well padded. The only downsides are that they are the most restrictive on ventilation and sight of the three. So first up is what type of head do you have? Now to keep it simple, like the helmets there are three main head types. Round oval, intermediate oval, and then long oval. It is best to have someone take a picture of your head from above and then you can judge what type of helmet you want to look for. For me, I can sometimes wear an intermediate helmet, but I'll find the long oval type the most comfortable for me. After knowing what type of helmet you want and what head type you have, the best way to size is to have someone take a tape measure around the crown of your head. You can then go to the helmet's website and find the sizing chart to see what size helmet you should get. And to find the right fit, you want it snug and pressing on your head, but not tight and painful in any way. You want your cheeks squeezed to where it is hard to chew gum, or you feel your teeth scrape inside of your cheeks if you open and close your mouth. The helmet should not spin or wiggle on your head when you shake your head and be snug. Again, you do not want a lot of discomfort, and there should be no pain at all. Your fingers should not be able to go in between your forehead and helmet padding as well. These are the three helmets that I use and are a good example of price and features. My size is large, and I will mention the weights which are for large sizes. 
I'm also not paid or sponsored by any of these brands. None of them were given to me. I'm not sponsored by any of them. I am just simply showing them to you because these are the ones that I've bought. These are the ones I researched and like the best. And I chose them for features or reasons that suit my needs. There are a lot of other brands out there, but I found that these three are the best for me. I will talk about the basic good and bad points of them as well, but won't discuss the exact price because that may change after I upload this video. So we're going to start with the cheapest, and that is the HJC i10. For an entry or cheap helmet, this is a good one, and for the price, it has decent features and safety ratings. The good points, it's the lightest helmet of the bunch, weighing in at 3.8 pounds. It has pretty decent wind noise overall, and it has both DOT and snow ratings. The bad points, it's been real hard to find a visor for, and the one that I found that actually works the best still pops off whenever I go to open it and close it occasionally. It is not as comfortable as the others and has cheaper vents and padding than the others. Uh, it is not painful at all and it's not uncomfortable. It's just you can feel the quality of the padding is not that nice. The Bell Qualifier DLX helmet shown here. Uh, my wife has a Bell helmet as well. Mine weighs in at 4.85 pounds. And the good points of this, it is very comfortable padding has both DOT and Snell ratings, but it also has MIPS safety ratings, uh, which they do test all over the helmet instead of just the front and back. It has good ventilation, and they have been around for a while. They're a good name brand and have a lot of different styles and wide ranges of prices. So they go from uh, the low end to the high end. Bad points, they're heavier than the HJC helmets, and it has a good bit of wind noise, and the older it gets, the more the noise it has. Now this one and the HJC not only have wind noise, but there is a lot of air that hits you in the face because of the way that they're made uh, compared to the Shoei, which is the last one I'm going to show. The older that the uh, Bell helmet has gotten for me, it's created more wind in my face than it did whenever I originally started out with it. And I do have OEM visors, not aftermarket parts, so it shouldn't really affect it that much. The Shoei RF 1400 is the heaviest of all my helmets, weighing in at 5.5 pounds. The good points, to me it is the most comfortable of them all. It has well made padding and vents, and the best overall I've had for wind noise of the three. It is well ventilated and has good safety features and is DOT and Snell rated. One of the main safety features that I like is that if you are to get in an accident, uh, when you're uh, when the ambulance pulls up and the person is checking on you, they can pull these little red straps right here because it gives them a little note on the side to do so, and they don't have to wiggle your head around trying to get the helmet off. They just simply pop the pads off and slide the helmet out of the way. Bad points, it is the highest price of the bunch, and they usually do run fairly high. And it is usually a very heavy helmet. Uh, hopefully that means that it's made better and protects you better. But you will find it a little bit heavy until you get used to it. But other than that, uh, it has been super comfortable and has very little air in my face unless I open up the vents and the visor as well. And it's very easy to find visor and replacement parts for them.